We're back with another episode of writing code to destroy Mario Party minigames. And that's right, this time I didn't take two months for a single video to come out. So let's get right into it. This time you guys asked to see some 2 vs 2 minigames and we will start with... Double Vision. It's another drawing game where you and your partner have to complete a sketch together. Each of you gets a part of an image and you have to trace the lines as well as you can. When the time is up, the accuracy of both team members is summed up and the team with more total points wins. To solve this game, there are three steps involved. First, we have to detect our part of the drawing. Next, we have to convert this information into a set of lines to follow. And finally, we have to move the cursor to actually draw the lines. The first part is easy enough. We can find out the RGB color of our part of the drawing and select it and similar colors with OpenCV. If you watched my other videos, you probably already know the inrange function. It takes an image, a lower and upper color bound and returns a mask with all selected pixels. The result is an image that is white where our lines are and black everywhere else. Now you may think, just draw in all the pixels and you're good to go. But it's not quite that easy. It actually takes a while for each individual pixel to be targeted and to draw all of them. So there's not enough time. It's much faster to draw in strokes, much like a human would. And as always, there's a neat way to determine these strokes automatically. We start by using Skeleton Eyes from the Scikit image package to thin the path. Basically, all the lines are very thick right now and we'd much rather have lines that are only one pixel wide. The result looks like this, but we are not quite there yet. The data we are working with is still encoded in a 2D image and we somehow need to get a path out of this. Actually, some of the parts are not even connected, so we really need to get a list of parts instead. The connected components function helps us separate all the different parts of the drawing so we can access them one by one. And finally, we move from the mask to an actual list of pixel positions by using the find contours function. We first filter out all components into their own image and then call find contours on them to retrieve the final results. Phew, that was a bit of work. But now we can literally just iterate over the lists and drag the mouse over the positions inside of them. And that should, in theory, be all we need. Oh yeah, and I coded in an automated game start detector. When the timer shows up, we know the game is running and I'm capturing the screen for the line detection in that frame. So let's see how it goes. Hell yeah, a perfect 100 points on all the images that the game has. And if you watched until here, you are legally obligated to subscribe and like the video. But now let's look at the next game. Cucumber Jacks is a pretty simple game, where you just have to slice a cucumber with a stylus. The team that first finishes theirs wins. You can't just go top speed though, as it also depends on how you slice it to not get any half slices, which slows you down. Now, surely there's a way to maximize the speed, but I was kinda lazy for this one. As long as I could beat two expert opponents while playing with an easy bot in my team, I count the game as solved. The experts are actually pretty strong in this game, so this will be a challenge. My code is rather simple. We just drag the cursor from one side of the screen to the other and back. And here you can see some of my failed attempts. I tried a few more combinations of timeouts and pixel positions, but ultimately I realized something else is going wrong. When you drag your stylus across the screen, the game actually reacts to the dragging motion on any frame while that action is happening. So every time the game loop runs, inputs are being detected and processed. That means for each real dragging motion, there are multiple points on the way. In our code though, we just jump from one end to the other. To test out if this makes a difference, I coded a quick function to generate interpolated points. You give it a start and an end point and also how many midway points you want to have. For starters, I decided to go for two midway points and test it out. And that actually worked pretty well. I'm sure there are even faster ways to do it, but for me, this is good enough. Before we go to the next one, I wanted to welcome all the new viewers. 
If you don't know it yet, this is the series where I want to automate all Mario Party DS minigames. And of course, I already finished quite a few, so definitely watch them after this video. Also comment your favorite games that you want me to destroy next. The last game for today is Boogie Beam. It's a 4 player reaction game, where periodically the lights turn on for some of the players. When that happens, you quickly have to press the correct button. Left if the light is on for your character and right if it's off. You get no points for pressing the wrong button of course. So what do we need to do to automate this game? First of all, the pixel positions for the two buttons we can press, which is simple enough. I added two simple functions to help with that and I will use them later after adding the detection logic. Next, we can capture the top screen and decide for any pixel in our play area to watch out for. Since the scene is static except for the light switching on or off, anything more complicated would be overkill. And as you can see, over the course of a game, the chosen position only ever has two different color values. So we note down the target values for lights on and lights off and add a check in the bot loop. Every frame we check the pixel position and then press the appropriate button. And if you paid attention, you may notice the issue with this approach. We don't really want to press the button every frame, only when any light is on at all. At the time when you need to press the button, there's always at least one light on, so we really need to check the positions for every player, not just ourselves. So I went ahead and decided on three more pixel positions to watch, and created some neat indicators to show when the light is detected as on. I also changed the logic, when no light is on, do nothing. As soon as any light turns on, check the light status for our player on the left and press the correct button, on or off. Let's see how this goes. Yep, that looks like it works perfectly. Now, this is the point where most people click off the video, but after I'm done rambling, I show some channel statistics. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, keep watching for a few more seconds. Anyway, thanks for sticking around until now. I hope to see you again in the next one. And of course, thanks to the certified Sigma Riz Lords, you guys are the best. <laughs>